In this video, we'll be taking apart the Google Pixel 9a. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a black rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. The camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. So you won't have to take apart the back plate to replace that. There are now 16 T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the plastic motherboard cover, we see the LED flash located here, the NFC and wireless charging coil, as well as graphite film top transfer heat. And here's a look at the other side. There's a single T4 or Torx 4 screw, which is holding down the cover over the battery connector. To pry off and remove the battery, there's this pull tab provided to help you pry it off. However, if it ends up being like the previous model of Pixel phones, it probably won't be the easiest tap to use, since generally you have to peel it up and slide it back and forth and move your way up and down on the battery to pry off the adhesive, and usually the adhesive underneath it ends up being really strong. But let's proceed and see how this one ends up being. Yep, just as I thought, just like previous models, it's not really a helpful pull tab. So I'll need to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 5100 mAh battery. There are two T4 or Torx 4 screws holding down the motherboard. The flex cable for the screen is attached underneath the motherboard, which would have to be disconnected to release the motherboard. However, we can see that with this design, you would be able to make a screen replacement by prying the screen off from the front and not have to disassemble the rest of the phone. Since you'd be able to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is and loosen up the adhesive underneath, and you'd disconnect this flex cable after removing the Torx 4 screw and the cover which is holding it down.
Looking at the main board, we see the 48 megapixel primary camera, as well as the 13 megapixel ultra wide. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner. The primary microphone is located on the bottom next to the charger port, and the charger port is still soldered to the main board, which will make replacing the charger port more difficult. There's a gray rubber gasket around the charger port, and a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. There's also copper tape on the shields to help transfer heat. The front facing camera connector is located here, which can be disconnected by just popping it off. Looking at the other side, we have a better look at the 13 megapixel front facing camera, as well as the connectors for the rear cameras, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity and ambient light sensor is located here, and there's copper tape and thermal pads on these shields to help transfer heat. The sim reader is also soldered to the main board, which will again make repairs more difficult in case you ever happen to damage or break any of the pins on the sim reader. Once the copper film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste or thermal compound over the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM or storage. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed. The copper vapor chamber is located here, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. And this is the bottom speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the speaker opening. So if you want to replace the screen, all you have to do is heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, disconnect the cable from the main board, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen to the frame. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker located on top. To replace the flex cable for the power button or volume keys, there are three T4 or Torx 4 screws holding down the metal plate which is holding it in place. Those would have to be removed and the metal plate can be lifted off, and the flex cable can be peeled off and removed. To replace the buttons themselves, they can just be pulled out of the frame. And this is the fingerprint reader which is adhered to the back of the screen. Now on this one if you're to accidentally insert the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the microphones and the filters are seated above the holes and they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.